Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about power over Ethernet. Now, networking devices need electrical power to function, and that's why they have a separate power cable. But some networking devices don't have a power cable. It's not that they don't need electrical power, it's just that they get their power and data from the same cable, which is through the Ethernet cable. This technology is called PoE, which stands for Power Over Ethernet. And this technology adds convenience to networking devices. And speaking of convenience, are you tired of paying a monthly fee for a VPN? Or would you rather save money with an all-in-one device? The Deeper Connect Air is a portable, decentralized, private network that's designed to provide secure internet access that surpasses traditional VPNs in speed, stability, and security. But unlike traditional VPNs, it doesn't rely on servers that can be flagged or banned by streaming services, but instead it operates on a user-based IP share system. And it's also plug and play. You just plug it into any device with a USB port and surf the internet safely and anonymously, with no software installation required. And some other key features that it has is that it doesn't rely on centralized servers. It has privacy protection, malware and tracker blocking, IP masking, app relocator, ad blocking, and more, all in this tiny pocket device. So if you're interested in enhancing your online experience and reduce your costs, I'll put a link to the product in the description below. Power over Ethernet is a technology that delivers DC power to networking devices, such as IP phones, security cameras, and wireless access points over the copper wires in an Ethernet cable, which eliminates the need for a separate power cable. So how does PoE work? How does an Ethernet cable supply a networking device with both data and power? Well, an Ethernet cable has four pairs of twisted pair wires inside. So it has a total of eight wires. Now in CAT5 and previous versions of Ethernet cable, four of those wires are used to transfer data, but the other four wires were not used. So in a typical networking device, four wires were used for data and four wires weren't used for anything. So in order to supply power to a device, early versions of PoE used the four unused wires to transfer power, while later versions of PoE use all eight wires to transfer power. So here we have a view of a CAT5 Ethernet cable and its twisted pair wires that haven't been arranged yet. So if we go ahead and straighten out these wires and arrange them to the correct wiring standard, the wires and pins 1, 2, 3, and 6 are used for transmitting data. And the wires and pins 4, 5, 7, and 8 are used for transferring power. Now in order for data and power to be transferred through this cable, it must be connected to a power sourcing equipment, or PSE, device. A PSE device supplies data and DC power to a power device, or PD, using an Ethernet cable. So in this example, our PSC device is a PoE switch, and our power device on the other end is a PoE IP phone. So when we plug an Ethernet cable into this switch, the switch will send data and power through the cable to the phone. So there's no need for this IP phone to have a separate cable for power, because it's getting it through the Ethernet cable. Now what if we plug this Ethernet cable into a standard non-PoE switch? Well, nothing would happen because this IP phone needs both data and power to function. And this standard switch can only transmit data through the cable and not power. However, there is a way to transmit both data and power to this IP phone without replacing this switch, and that is by using a PoE injector. A PoE injector converts a non-PoE device to a PoE device without replacing your existing equipment. A PoE injector has two ports, a LAN port and a PoE port. The LAN port would be connected to one of the switch's ports with an Ethernet cable, and the PoE port would be connected into the IP phone using another Ethernet cable, and then the injector would be plugged into an electrical outlet. So now the injector is getting data from the switch and power from the electrical outlet and it's transmitting them both over this Ethernet cable to the IP phone. 
So what are the benefits of power over Ethernet? Well, for starters, convenience. Because, for example, when you have multiple devices, such as IP phones all over a building, those phones need network data and they also need power to function. So not only do you have to run network cables through the building and connect them to the phones, but you also need to run power cables from an electrical outlet to those phones. And that leads us to another benefit, is that it saves time and money. Because without PoE, you may need to hire an electrician to install more power outlets in a building, which can be time consuming and very expensive. And another benefit is flexibility, because without the need of devices having to be near electrical outlets means that they can be placed in more ideal locations and they can easily be repositioned later on. There are also two different kinds of power over Ethernet. There is active and passive. When a power device connects to a PoE switch, power is sent from the switch to that device. But some devices may require different amounts of power than others. So if a device doesn't have enough power, it won't turn on. Or if it gets too much power, the device could blow up. So this is why active PoE was created. When a power device connects to an active PoE switch, the switch will first test the connection to ensure power compatibility. And then it will communicate with that device to be sure it delivers the correct amount of power that the device needs. Now passive PoE is the dumb version of PoE. It doesn't talk to the devices. It constantly sends power and it sends the same amount of power to whatever device it's connected to. So this is why it's important to check the voltage requirements of a power device before connecting it to a passive PoE switch. Because if you connect it to the wrong voltage, it could permanently damage your equipment. Power over Ethernet was first developed by Cisco in the year 2000, which was a mechanism that they created to deliver power and data to their IP phones, similar to how basic landline phones get power using regular telephone lines. And in 2003, the first standardized version of PoE, which was the IEEE 802.3AF, or better known as Type 1, was released. This standard had a power output of 15.4 watts which was enough to power certain devices at that time. So as technology progressed, engineers realized the potential of this technology and created a newer standard to supply power to more power-hungry devices. And in 2009, the IEEE 802.3AT standard, or Type 2, was released, which is also known as PoE+. And this standard doubled the power output to 30 watts. And in 2011, that power was doubled again to 60 watts when Cisco came out with their own proprietary standard called Cisco Universal Power over Ethernet. And this led to the release of the IEEE 802.3BT standard, or Type 3, which is also known as 4-pair power over Ethernet, which utilized all four pairs of wires. And in 2018, the 3BT standard was amended, and this had a power output of 90 watts, which is enough to even power a laptop computer. So guys, I want to thank you for watching this video on power over Ethernet. Please subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.